You know, the so I got it working a lot better now. I put this adjustable washing machine level switch in it. I don't know what the, uh, the pressure adjustment on this thing is supposed to be. Uh, it's a lot different pressure here, so it works, but not quite as it should. This thing has a little bit of pressure after I adjust that washing machine, washing, um, machine float switch to the same. They came out of that speed queen. So that goes there. I don't know what the hell they'll adjust it to though, but now that I've replaced it, that seems to work now. Oh, it did. Got to close the door first, eh? Hey? There we go. Of the motor, so I put a, um, a hard drive platter between in, in there to take the um, shaft out. This will be a one hour meter top um, setup. And the same sorts of motor stators that Ruben at 33 years in this experiment. That's all there too, I think. Yeah, it's all isolated from this bit so I can touch it, but not a good idea too. That's the water softener and built and everything in this thing. It even has an inbuilt water softener. How cool is that? I hear a hum. I don't know if that's that solenoid. Yeah, this solenoid's working. I hear that humming. So I'll be letting water in now. There's also a tiny crack in there which I could fix with a bit of glue. Super glue will fix that. Wonder why that got cracked. Alright, it's an easy fix, it's only a small one. That's the main pump, recirculates everything for the, um, the wash bars. And you got a thermal cut out there if things get too hot. And this is your main drain pump, it drains the um, machine at the end of the cycle. Hey, cat! That's the main one, that one is okay. This and here's the one um, that was buggered all along. So this one here turns everything off and the um, uh, pump finishes draining, I think. 11th month for 998, yeah. It's a pretty old machine. Now listen carefully for the timer's going. There's the timer's going, it's only a new timer, that. I know I replace the timer. And I've uh, found this thing in the first place. I might have just needed to buy one of these, but oh well. It's all part of the fun of repairing these. It doesn't seem the time, so it's not quite the right switch by the looks of it. Um, I wonder if I take the hose off and just see yeah, how I'll do that. I'll take the hose off, put the, um, my hose on there and just blow on it, see if that does nothing. Unplug safety first. Also found this stuff hidden underneath this handle. It's like felt kind of stiff. The handle of this stuff behind it, someone's kid put it in there. The original line is that the kids put it in there. A Rintel TV 7 Prime. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Another TV drawing. Uh, I'm going to blow on this now. The heading element's turned on this time. Well, it works. So when something's full, it turns off. Okay, that does what it should. I should have to blow us hard now. Interesting. 
has to be an adjustment though, to move the switch close, further and closer away from the drive thing. Where's this is going? Hey, cat. Hey. Cat came up quite nice after a good bath and a groom. He's nice and soft now. Oh, I guess I put this thing back together and find a way to secure that switch and put the hose back on it and give it a test run. I won't be able to test it for real unless there's water going through it so the switch um, will actually work. Let's see what happens. Okay, it says it's working now. Got the water and everything hooked up. Still a little bit temperamental, but it's working. All the functions are on. The door's a bit distorted though. It's the best I can get it to close out. It seems to be badly warped. This side's alright. There's a big gap on this side. The door doesn't want to stay open either. For some reason, the door's not that it's popping off. It chucks, puts the lead weights in this thing so the door holds open when I open it. It's a pretty poor design, but. This brand's uh, the shit, as they say, so. A bit overrated, but. Still worth fixing. I put washing powder on this one. Yeah, washing powder's all I had. <laughs> hey, it warmed up. Starts right up. Yeah. I didn't have any dishwashing powder, so I just put some washing powder in it. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> the wash the bloody thing out. Stinks in there. Old and smelly. I only put about two tablespoons worth of this washing powder in there. Laundry powder. I got a little uh, cement trowel in there just to test, see how it washes. Yeah, the head out of it's working. That's good. Water seems to have gone through that. I think it's just on pump mode, I think. Or am I on cycle three? Let it go for a while and see how it goes. It's somewhat working better. But that presser switch is not, probably not, not adjusted right now, so it may, may not work properly because of the way the um, presser switch is adjusted. Okay, I've just turned the handy on them and off about 20 minutes ago. I don't think that's 55 degrees Celsius. That's a lot bloody hotter than that. But it snooze me to believe, I'm going to have to check the thermal cutout on the bottom of the, oh, bottom of the machine down there. Because the other Simpson one, the other manual Simpson dishwasher I've got does the exact same thing. It gets so hot I can fill it with coffee and turn it to a bloody coffee maker. It's that bloody hot. So this is doing the same thing, it's overcooking itself. Now if I check the thermal cut out in the bottom of the machine, making sure make sure it's working. I might have to replace it for another thermal cut out of, of an iron or something I've got. I've got I should have plenty of spares of those. Yeah, the thermal cutout's not working. That's what I reckon, because a Simpson dishwasher does the same thing. It gets bloody hot. I, I am without the heating element. The heating element and everything else irons up okay. So there's no shorts or um, high resistance to normal heating elements in there. I think the, switch, the original switch um, just was a bit old, because the contacts looked a bit pitted and oxidised over the years. That's why the other um, plate switch failed contacts weren't looking too well and led to a high resistance short and that's what finally finished it off. Yeah, I'm going to check the thermal switch in this one I think. Even put a, put a lower temperature one in it for the best way to go. It's working quite well though with a washing machine uh, flight switch in there. That thing's pretty much good to go. I did um, open this door manually too because it didn't open on the time. 
it works quite normally. I'll put a bit of hot, heavy duty copper wire on that um, bottom paddle because the uh, clips are broken and that seems to hold on without popping off. Got the spider webs in there. It's cleaned up, cleaned up very well. Wait for it to respond. From what I can tell, that the grey is manual. This grey cycle seem to take for bloody ever, but the green cycles, they go, the motors on all the time. But with the first three cycles, they don't seem to, uh, well, they don't seem to advance very much. They just go for bloody ages and don't seem to uh, advance. They seem to be manual, I think. They must be manual, these ones. You can wash as long as you want. And these are the automatic cycles. So overnight, so to speak. The 65 degree source, since I left this one unplugged, or um, the cycle off, so. It seems to be heating under its own uh, steam, not getting too hot now. Because when this was on, it got really hot. And there the washing powder foam wash out of it. No leaks, which is good. Just dries the boat under there. It's a good sign. Alright, we've got a good dishwasher now. The Ariston seems to be fixed. Nice. Here we go. For a free dishwasher, I can't complain. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.